In this episode, the roof frame is about finished. Yeah, bring on the rafters, boys. And we are finally looking into the historical context of the roundhouse. I need a hand. Now, well, that looks like it's going in. It's a slight pain in the hole, man. Put the camera down for a minute, Julius. Nice. Join us on this bushcraft adventure into history, building an Irish Celtic roundhouse from the Iron Age and medieval times. Every Friday, a new episode with Julius, Dylan, Jaeger and Thomas. Enjoy! That was a close call, man. That would have been fierce nasty, man. Wow. Maybe we could do it. Beautiful, the best fitting piece of wood of the whole structure yet. Are we making a Viking house, uh, Dylan? A Viking house? Yes. Well, something in the same era, right? Yeah. You seem to be a Viking uh, reenactor. I seem to be. Yes, since yesterday. Yeah, you tell me. You have the ones with Viking chicks as screensavers. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that one coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Het is wel gaande. Ja, ik heb toch weer een downward pressure nodig. Put your hand a little bit more away so for folks at home can see some. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, folks, bring some uh, some jokes. Smooth, <laughs> fixed to houden. Folks, folks. How's the building doing? <laughs> the building going. That's boertje. Deze man, nou. Even your drill. What? Your drill. Smooth. Oh, lekker. Stick weer met mijn neus. Oh, die staat op camera. Two hands, two hands, oh. oh! Yep. Did that sound good? <laughs> no. Go no. If you cut down like two thirds of what is left. Yeah, and then... Uh, and then try another hammer. Yeah. Something like that. Oh, 
dan liefst gewoon een kastje van door. Timber. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, nice one. This is solid, right? The horizontals will go on and then we can cut off the center pole. Yeah, that will be exciting. I'm gonna go off on a ramble now in a minute, I feel. The entrance of much debate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay, so let's uh, start the debate. <laughs> The debate. Uh, I mean, the, 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 episode one. The days of debating here is over. The choice has been made for. For the moment. For the moment. We can change it if we want to. Yeah, but you wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, it seems like a more traditional method is just having a low door, this being flush like that, and you go in historically accurate like that. Creeping. Creeping. As in. in, in <laughs> <laughs> That could be part of a roundhouse feeling. I know it's less practical, but you know, it looks good. The look, the good. arch. Yeah. But uh, according to our historical man, it's, it's a Gothic style rather than the Iron Age roundhouse. So. And th there were some people who said, "Oh yeah, this option I like more because it it might be more uh, insulating because the door is a lot smaller." Or a bit smaller. A little bit smaller, but yeah. does that really matter? I have to say that the walls have been quite gone outward, so it is quite a big door. But you know, for the big cauldron coming in, <laughs> <laughs> a door will go a long way. Uh -huh. But if there's holes on the right and the left of it, then it, <laughs> it doesn't matter how tight your door is. No, but, but we also have discussed the option of plastering the, the inside. Yeah, so we With should insulation. plaster the inside first and then come back to the door. For me, it's easy, but let, let us know what you guys think. It's interesting. I mean, they did it like the, the other way, probably more in history, and they did it for a reason that way. They weren't stupid. You don't know. That's the problem with history. It's like, oh, they didn't do it like that. Yeah, but sure, nobody really knows why. You know, we just assume we do, but we don't, really. Mm -hmm. And if those dudes were here today, but they'd be like, I wish I had one of those. And you know? Yeah, true. And you still can't say that maybe they did build it like this in history. 
I mean, from the archaeological evidence, mostly is left is signs in the ground. And you yeah. won't exactly know how they built the roof. So Let's dive into some roundhouse history in Ireland. Our roundhouse wasn't actually the first time a dry stone structure was showcased on Smooth Gefixed. Let's go back in the days. Twice our survival challenges featured a dry stone monument. Clues that here in Ireland dry stone walling has been a common way of building in the past. Here we are on the Dunford Island. These structures are obviously way bigger than our roundhouse, but still have a similar round shape. Such a stone fort is called a dune, a significant fort of a high status person, which was used as a residence and status symbol. What an amazing place for wow. an amazing challenge. We better get going then. Okay, good luck man. The exact date of construction is unknown, but dune fort was likely built in the late Iron Age. Here we go for a swim. Often roundhouses similar to what we are building were built inside these kind of enclosing structures. There were several types of enclosures. A stone enclosure is called a cashel, while a basic farmstead often had an enclosing bank from earth called a rath. And there was also the cranoch, a partly or entirely artificial island surrounded by water as an enclosure. Dunefort is a unique form of a dune on an island similar to a cranoch. Stone built enclosures and houses were typically found in the western part of Ireland where wood was scarce. The most famous Irish roundhouses are actually built out of just stone. The Clochon, Skellig Michael, UNESCO World Heritage and Star Wars filming site. Where wood was plentiful, archaeological evidence here in Ireland points towards roundhouses made from hazel woven wattle. At University College Dublin they found that rather than using wattle and dop for the walls, these houses were made with double wattle walls, with organic material in between as insulation. Interesting enough, the hazel wattle also forms the roof. The outer wall comes to about this height, uh, whereas the inner wall continues to form the roof inside. It's basically similar to an upturned basket. It's then thatched with heather. Traditionally, straw, reed or heather were used for thatching the roofs. This heather has proved um, to be much more effective in uh, allowing smoke to, um, to breathe through the house more naturally. Our roundhouse most closely resembles a roundhouse built within the cashel at Lika Nabuilia in County Kerry, built around the 9th century. This roundhouse has a similar inner diameter as ours of 4.5 meters with evidence of several post holes inside, which suggests to the excavating archaeologists that the roof was constructed of timber or thatch, rather than fully enclosed with stone, like many clochens are. But this is not only about historical build, it's mainly about us applying our bushcraft uh, knowledge in a practical way we think is most Exactly, exactly. Well, and, and using and to local get the, materials. And get the nicest result for us, like yeah. usability. You know, so. I mean, we want to use it, we don't build it just for the sake of it. So. And then the internal frame. This has also been a long debate. If you really would put these in, like extra support stage. Not gonna cut it, is it? Hmm? Perfect. Nice one. Well, we have put them in now, mainly with the reason that they will be very handy to make a bed there. Yeah. But then on the other side. Yeah, I would put them in too on the other side. I mean, for me, having all those poles in it, it degrades a bit of the, the openness and the, the structure. I know, but you're gonna put stuff in there anyway, like beds and tables. Yeah. So then why not have the two combined? 
for the beds that that makes a lot of sense i mean we're making four bunk beds on that side so th those poles are really necessary for that and we choose them to to not make post holes but put them on stones for because it's only downward pressure yeah, anyway so they would less likely rot underneath there from the groundwater coming up so that's why we didn't put them in the ground after all for the roof structure in my opinion for the strength of it it was never necessary because this is not that much of a diameter that you really need all this upper strength in the middle we can always do it later yeah after it collapses <laughs> one side what have we ahead of us we are almost in touching phase yeah well we need sort of horizontal pieces mm -hmm. attach the attached to so basically there's options but every option has pros and cons exactly so you have an option with rushers is local which is like the next field down the road so we can get it now and there's plenty of it mm -hmm. but they're short lengths and, and the durability, durability is a question is, is questionable. so or do we say okay no we put more effort in getting them but then once we have the reeds for example we need less of it and it lasts longer uh, another one is header the header comes higher in my rankings i mean the touching would maybe be a little more, more difficult but there's this lasting and we have those very yeah. lands with header in in the area or and something if i like look that. at it myself header it seems really rough it's like a bush so it's a different but it's style. Very it's, it's very traditional. Heather. It's very traditional yeah, and, and I think it's more airy too maybe. Yeah, but, but, it but, it, be but, but it's definitely more commonly used than rushers were. And also a lot more long lasting. I mean, header is very woody, so. I think there's a good few questions. What, what's happening when it's done? Like for sure, we want to sort of kit out the inside with beds and tables and chairs. Uh -huh. and, and then Julius uh, is going to stay here for a while. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be lovely. We go get some sticks. Yes. Yeah, and let us know what you guys think of this. Nice one. All right, let's go. Next week Friday, instead of a usual roundhouse episode, we try to do a live stream from the roundhouse camp. Tune in. Consider watching the Wall Roundhouse series. Subscribe and tune in for a new roundhouse episode every Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern US, 8 p.m. UK, 9 o'clock Central Europe. Thanks a lot for watching and your great support. See you on the next one.